Welcome back to here at Goldberg. Today I'll be talking about the importance of choosing your online mentors well. Unfortunately, too many of these people are very cynically in a dishonest fashion trying to market and not looking out for what's in your best interest. In fact, in many cases, they will mislead you because it serves a specific narrative or their own bank account. Now you're going to say, why do you care about Patrice Stedman? Why do you bring it up again? This is the last time, I promise you. I didn't realize how much of a scumbag this dude actually is. We might be able to forgive a 20-year-old hothead who's uh, excessively online or a coping boomer, but a middle-aged man married with young children, I believe under the age of five, both of them, just with reckless abandon, getting involved in something based upon an online meme, no sense of an exit strategy, no alternative, this is where red pill thinking leads, mind you, to just stupidity narcissism and you stop for a second and go all right you were teaching men how to get laid even though you have these young children that's the first great example of a role model as a father right number two he's probably as a conservative republican at some point said uh, one of the problems with this country is that black men don't raise their kids oh really what do you think is going to happen to your kids at a young formational stage of their lives while you're locked up in federal prison for four years because you're a dumbass you're not a red pill activist or an egg sperm at women no you're just a, an, an idiot an imbecile by the way when you were a pua were you running game on married women so would it now be acceptable for some of your followers to run game on your lonely wife I simply have so much contempt for these individuals. You know, if I was president, I would grant clemency to most people engaged in that whole hoedown throwdown. But individuals like this deserve to be locked up because they're just trash, fundamentally. Not many other ways to say it. And of course, now he's doing the religious spiraling, the tradcon spiraling on Twitter as he awaits his time in prison. They all do the same thing. Life is good. They don't really care. Then it becomes about, I need to find redemption because, oh, I'm a dumbass. Go figure. And he's posting this stuff like, you need to go and touch grass. Women are actually great outside. Don't listen to these dating shows. In truth, there's a wonderful, bountiful amount of fantastic chicks available to you. He's even uh, posted stuff like, whether you should go for a girl who's good and has a low notch count or doesn't have a perfect past is irrelevant. You have to get over those questions. I've noticed now the move has gone from she has to be a virgin to a good girl with low notch count. Would you say, so if a chick has, for instance, five guys she slept with versus 10, is the one with five a good girl by these red pill standards? You can answer the question. I don't even know. I don't want to go there, to be honest. He also is reposting from Date Psych, who I may do a separate response to because I think he's kind of a bit of a chameleon tradcon. He wants to come off as just the science dude, but in many cases, the interview I saw of him, he was, in my opinion, misrepresenting stats and trying to interpret them in such a manner that serves that idea that it's actually great out there if you just do X, Y, Z. But apparently, according to these studies, 74% of women under the age of 25 uh, and 77% of those in the full 18 to 30 cohort, they want to be approached more by men. This is a classic example of you use a stat to get some gullible clown to believe, oh yeah, I should keep following what you're saying. Of course, while that might be true, assuming it is, which just because women say something in a study doesn't mean that they necessarily believe it or act on it, at the end of the day, they want to be approached by certain types of men, not by the majority. This is the reason you see them trying to shame random bald cells in the gym who they think or have imagined are checking them out in a creepy fashion. So yeah, they want to be approached by a guy who gives them tingles or whatnot, who has certain features. That doesn't necessarily mean, oh, you're a sub five, just go up and talk to her. She's going to fall in love with you. Like, oh yeah, all these women, they, they just really want a guy to start a relationship. But first of all, and there's a couple of things to be understood here. Women in their 20s, by and large, are not dying to be in LTRs and get married. That is more of this moomer, boomer projection, that that's what females are actually uh, chasing. No, they are wanting to chomp at Chad's bit. They're not looking at most dudes and saying, oh, definitely. Uh, if that was the case otherwise, well,
women, when they want to be sociable, especially if they like a guy, if they don't approach him themselves, they will make themselves very available. Their body language, they won't be able to control because they want to make it clear, I desire this dude. If they don't like the men around them, they will clam up and they will try to be very icy, off-putting. They will not help the guy out whatsoever. This is something that, you know, attraction, you don't choose. So when these guys try to pretend, oh, if you just go and approach women, everything else it takes care of itself, not necessarily. And the girls, like I said, that are content in their lifestyle, they're in their 20s, they've got a decent office job, not too difficult, they've got an overpriced apartment, which is comfy, they've got their little dog, they go to the booty pop workout class, if they want to hook up, they can do it on an app with someone they find attractive, or they have their blunderbuss electric toy. They're not interested in having to be in a relationship with some normie per se, where they have to put in work. A lot of women get lazy. They like the inertial stages of the relationship. They like the status symbol of, I have a boyfriend. They like the validation of him simping for them, but they don't really enjoy reciprocating to a man. This is why the longer you date most women, usually they start getting lazier and letting themselves go, even if you are taking care of yourself. This is typically what happens. It's not a negative a talking point. There's plenty of people who can relate to this. Women let themselves go. And uh, I'm not saying men never do it, but women do let themselves go because they become, uh, essentially, they take it for granted that they've got this guy around. And the only way that POAC you can resist that is by running game and flirting with other women or trying to have side chicks, which that can be a little bit gnarly when it comes to the whole, oh, you're married or are you cheating type of thing, especially in the countries where we mostly live. Supposing women do in fact want a relationship or marriage, it's easy for them to find it. They can just start cold approaching men at the grocery store, at the mall, the coffee shop. They can choose regular dudes who seem put together on dating apps, but they're not doing so because it doesn't excite them. It doesn't turn them on. And they're just not motivated because their life is well taken care of. I've said this before. The economic emancipation of women was the biggest hammer blow to tradition and to the, essentially, the viability of regular men possible. It's not necessarily women having the right to vote. It's having the ability to make their own money, have their own property. That is the single most important factor. All that being said, I don't dismiss POAs off the bat. I like to put into practice their strategies and see if there's any validity to what they're claiming. But the harsh pill to swallow is that the vast majority of women who are open to being approached in public or on dating apps by average to sub five males are only receptive because they have some problem and they've determined, hmm, this is the right stable individual who can help me solve it if I can just snag him, if I can turn off my regular predilections for other types of men, then I can get a benefit. So these are going to be females who have psychological or health issues, who are socially very awkward and there's a reason why they're on an app or there's a reason why some guy is randomly approaching them as opposed to them having a social circle where they can meet. They're gonna have financial burdens. The number of girls out there with a lot of debt or low wages who are trying to find that dude who can secure their retirement, widespread. Another thing is going to be prison hoes. I'll have to do a separate video and go into these specific instances because it's fascinating. The number of chicks you'll see who they look just like normal suburban Caucasians or whatnot, and they've got serious criminal records would perhaps surprise you. And then biological entrails children from previous relationships. Okay, you can help me take care of this because it's a big burden being a single mom. And once you recognize all that, it makes life a lot easier where you're not as a man degrading yourself to bail out a woman who doesn't really care for you, but rather is concerned with how you're going to solve her problem. And there's nothing anti-woman about this. It's just saying that everyone tends to view relationships to some degree as transactional. It doesn't matter how much you want to dress it up in religion or trad conservatism, which we'll do a separate video on that as far as Islam and other cultures are concerned. Just be careful with these people because they tend to be somewhat deceptive. In fact, what I find is that they are ultimately trad cons at heart, even if they're PUAs. It's like if people have said that 
PUAs are failed tradcons, tradcons are failed PUAs. You might argue that the tradcons and the PUAs form a sympient circle. What cucks one will cuck the other. You must understand this. But yeah, if these women are okay with you approaching them randomly, it's typically because they've targeted you. It's not the other ducks in the row. Because with them, it's, they're built in the lab. They've got their guinea land wells in a row. And so they're like, all right, if I just play things right, he is going to get me out of this problem. I, I have to slightly adjust my behavior, but I'll be fine. And so here we have a post by Troy Francis, also known as Budget Daniel Craig, a libertarian PUA of some prominence. He says a high value man is a bachelor in his 40s and 50s, has a vasectomy. Now me personally, I would never get a vasectomy. Maybe if you were a DiCaprio type person, it makes sense because so many women are vying for you. But as a regular guy, when I hear these dudes, Clariites, Mistals saying, you know, when I turn 19 for Christmas, I want to get my parents to get me a vasectomy because they have this imagination that is drawn from the boomer era or the 90s where they're going to be smashing all these chicks. And so they got to be careful. Realistically speaking, if you're a norm, you're a sub five, unless you're super extroverted or well plugged into a social circle, you're not going to get anything except what's available. And suppose that you want to go overseas. Well, if you're doing unprotected overseas with a bunch of different chicks, good luck, my friend. I think the only reason a guy should consistently bang a chick unprotected is because you have you're more or less okay with having a kid with that particular female. If not, take precautions because those implants, those pills do not always function as they're supposed to. So it's just a better option to, uh, you know, take some measures. He's child-free by choice. He travels extensively, reads voraciously, swims in the sea every morning in the sunshine, enjoys the best of life, unfettered by concerns and responsibilities other have. So this is kind of the classic individualistic libertarian approach and other people in the manure sphere did not take kindly to what troy said in this case we have alexander cortez bro science fitness fat loss bear in mind this guy apparently claims to have a phd i hope he's larping because he has an actual phd this is embarrassing how to be a low value man embrace selfishness over low relationships or is that irrelationships i never heard that word before <laughs> selfish you're selfish if you take care of yourself maybe but there's a lot of guys who are not selfish and they're treated like garbage it's as i've said um, or child free because he's too emotionally crippled to love anyone but himself remember though that you could get married and your children could be the best thing ever or they could also break your heart even if you raise them well and you show them unconditional love i mean how many times have we seen fathers with their daughters who just do everything with the men they date with the life they live to give the middle finger to where they came from or you might have a wife who's fantastic and it was the best decision you ever made or you might have a wife that ruins your life makes you question reality because she gaslights you tries to separate you from your kids so none of this stuff is either or and when guys try to pretend you really have to start scratching your head he wastes his life with no legacy beyond indulgence and avoidance of discomfort once more, discomfort can be having a family, and then if it goes south, that can be discomfort. I'm not saying you have to live all your life on the basis of what if, but I highly suggest all you guys watch that soft white underbelly video, the interview with a divorce lawyer. That is more genuinely truth pill knowledge than you're going to get with years being in the manure sphere, just telling you. Travels constantly to avoid self-reflection. So that's an example of a completely illogical statement from a schmuck. Uh... And again, if he has a PhD, this is truly a travesty. You can self-reflect wherever you are. I just got back from vacation. When I'm on vacation, I'm seeing certain sites. I'm meeting people. I'm, I'm uh, experiencing various cultures. I'm journaling about it. I might relay it back in a video in conversation with other people. It's not, oh, you can't reflect unless you're at home in your, uh, your little ratty apartments or you are off the grid. This is just a silly type of argument people use because... In reality, you're probably too locked down, or maybe you don't have the resources to travel. Travel is not just taking selfies at landmarks and going to resort. Travel can be a lot of different things. And just trying to crap on it because 
it's uh you know it's been taken over by instagram people i think is kind of childish it shows that you don't have much understanding of the world with that being said alexander cortez he is actually a very successful man and he is i thought it was his girlfriend but apparently he's married with a kid this is his wife she's a crypto guru with her own twitter page so he settled down with a reasonably attractive puja now i've had better pujas not that, that really says much but you see Beta Bucks Deluxes, you see Sandeeps who work in IT, who maybe because of a close family friend or arranged marriage, they have a prettier wife. And with all this, wish them the best. Hope you have a wonderful life together. But what I'm saying is for these guys to go around constantly hate on other dudes or try to put them down for not being good enough. You know, he's known as Chad Jesus. He's so tall and he's ripped. He's like a Greek god. And you put in all this effort and stop being a victim, stop being a whiner. You do all this stuff, you build your business, you self-improve, and you end up with some mediocre chick that any random normie can get. It's like when people make fun of Hamza Burger because he has all this clout and he's just with these mediocre chicks. I'm not saying that looks are everything if a woman has good character, but I'm just, you could go to like some, maybe not even India, let's say one of the smaller countries in a part of the world and walk into a medium-sized city or even a village and probably get some pretty ass chick who's not sullied by any other men less likely at least initially to be a feminist than most you're going to meet in the west um, now that has its own problems it's not a perfect solution by any means the point i'm trying to make is that they push all this stuff about how you're not good enough and then you see that they're basically living the regular life of anyone else but they want to hate on you for not measuring up to their standards, which I feel these standards are more about getting validation from other men than actually attracting pretty women or getting that amazing, beautiful model trad wife. Strangely enough, this Chad Giraffe Jesus was a protege or an acolyte of Mike Cernovich's Gorilla Mindset. And Cernovich was another of those guys. He built this whole online brand of, oh, I, I get all these women, I'm, I'm you know, irresistible. No one can stop me from getting the hotties. And then at the height of his fame, after he'd already been married once, he decides to wed this really average Iranian chick. And there are some sexy ass Iranian women, mind you. Persian chicks can be just on another level. But you're saying, it's fine, again, good for you, you have a family. But why do you have to spend so much of your life putting down other men, making them feel insecure for not being as good as whatever, but at the end of the day, you're just doing essentially what's average. You're doing what some guy who works a white collar job, goes on the treadmill 30 minutes a day and meets a girl either from college or through a you know happy hour or whatever. And you're saying, oh, well, I'm so much better. You need to look up to me. I just think a lot of it's a bunch of LARPing and coping. You know, it's fantastic. Do self-improvements if you feel like it. If you want to make more money, you want to have a better physique. But do it because you want it, not really for other people. Unfortunately, there's a lot of that on the internet. And just recognize most of the people that you're following are deeply flawed and not necessarily possessing the best judgment. It's important to recognize that or you can spend too much of your life trying to measure up to their standards instead of saying, what is in your interest? You want to get married? Fantastic. If you want to just be by yourself fantastic but try to have a realistic honest approach and don't let yourself be gaslit or uh, made to feel like you're insufficient by these randos on twitter youtube or candyland wherever you're getting them from